doing theory today we've got Steve Neal's genre theory when I can get my words out so been in uni all day and I've come back I've got my little notebook and I've wrote down the order in which I like the process I go through when it comes to creating ideas so that could be whether it's a short story a novel for the film and media students and friends with they're uh, coming up with films and documentary ideas and TV show ideas and they're looking pretty good. Anyway, when I start my ideas, genre is usually the first thing that I think of and for my project at the minute at uni I looked at the books that I read already or the TV shows I watch already or anything like that and base my idea off of the most popular genres that I read and watch. Now when I was looking at my bookshelf, which is an absolute mess right now, there's romance, um, horror, crime, but it's more pop crime is definitely the more popular. If anyone doesn't know what genre is, it is basically just the fancy word of saying whether it's a romance, um, horror, sci fi, comedy romance comedy since we're now combining them anyway so for today's video i am going to be talking about steve neal and his genre theory and then how that can be well how that can then relate to coming up with ideas for your very own creative projects so a bit of background information steve neal is a British philosopher and specialist in the philosophy of language who has written extensively without, about meaning, information, interpretation and communication. He has a theory of repetition and difference. So every horror film all basically follow the same storyline. Some are going to a house, well, like the most stereotypical one is some teenagers go into a house, probably shouldn't have done, bad stuff happens, maybe one of the, or two of them get out alive. That is the most stereotypical horror story there is. Romance. They all follow the boy meets girl. And that is another theory I will get into later on. So every romance, stereotypically, boy meets girl, they fall in love, can't be together, something bad happens, they decide to stuff it, we're going to be together anyway. And some tragic accident happens so they can't be together and that's basically the plot for Romeo and Juliet, Faults in Our Stars. I can't think of any romance off the top of my head. Me Before You, I love that book. But yeah, so that is basically his theory that every novel of a genre, so every romance novel, every horror novel, every sci-fi novel follows a particular pattern. So Genre theory studies the nature of how and why genres created, are created and evolve. Neil stresses that genre are not systems, they are processes of system... I, take, I can't read, I'm so sorry. And that genres are in, instances of repeti, repetition and difference. So like I said, every romance follows a particular storyline, every horror, every comedy, every sci-fi, every... I can't think of any more genres. Fantasy, I guess. And all your Disney films will follow the same storyline virtually. It might not always be Prince Saves the Princess, but they always seem to follow that same sort of structure. Now, I've chosen to do this one first because... And as part of this series, as part of another video series thing I'm working on. Genre is the first step in I use to come up with my ideas. So as I said, I looked at my bookshelf and the TV shows and my Netflix and all the films that I like to watch anyway and then picked out what kind of genre I'd prefer to write out of them. So 
coursework, for example, crime was probably the biggest, or like the most popular thing that I watch and read. Absolutely love my crime novels. I think I end up spending too much time in my life watching them, like watching different murder mystery shows and stuff. But hey ho. So, as I said, it relates to writing because, like I said, in my process of going through things, genre is the first thing I think of. But it can also relate to semiotics, which is probably going to be the next theory because it relates so much to this one. As humans, we have been programmed, and that might sound a bit weird, to understand certain object colours, symbols, to represent a certain genre. And stepping away from genres a minute, just to show how well this works, we are trained to know that a red light means stop and a green light means go. That is basically all that means. So putting it into the context of looking at a novel, for example, we know that if there is a bat on top of on a front cover of a book in the bookshop, it's more than likely going to be a horror with vampires in it, unless it is in the like the science bit, learning about bats. But any other time and place, it's probably going to have bat vampires in it. So that is basically what it's saying, or like the colours that are used, red can be red romance, passion, or it can be danger, blood. So, ha and then fonts, I've not mentioned it on the screen, but like the fonts that are used in the cover um, can have that same effect on you. So if you see two books same title on them but one is one colour scheme one is a different one which one are you more likely to read so like if you were to see dracula for example because that's the first one that popped in my head and it's got like a really gory font on it it's black and red it's colours that are associated more with the horror genre but then you see dracula next to it and it's pink and purple with love hearts it it just does not work out it, you're going to pick it up thinking it's a completely different book called Dracula. So, I've chosen to go over this first, and I'm going to do a more in-depth video on Thursday. Yeah, Thursday. On what my process is then from choosing my genre. On then mind mapping ideas. So... Once I've chosen to work with crime fiction, for example, which is the one I'm using for my coursework, how did I then come up with that idea? Or like, how did I come up with the idea then, which I then went on with for my coursework? But for the sake of all these videos that I'm going to be working on, I'm going to come up with a brand new idea and walk myself through it with you guys. And I think that is it from me. I know this is a bit of a short video, but... um. I can't really think of anything else. I think the theory ones are probably only going to be like 10, 20 minutes if I'm lucky. But the other ones where I'll actually be doing the creative writing and doing the mind mapping and showing you guys the process I go through when I'm doing anything of that kind of thing. So at the minute I'm trying to write a book, or at least I was, but it's gone completely off course. And my house is covered in post-it notes and everything. But I'm going to be showing you all that in a bit. So I think that's it from me. So tatty bye and I shall see you on Thursday. Bye.